Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to take another look at some of our trig identities that we learned last chapter. Now we're going to look at them in terms of angles. Now remember we have our reciprocal identities and these are the same that we're used to. Nothing really surprise here. When I say reciprocal identities these are the identities that cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine theta. Cotangent of theta is 1 over tangent of theta. And from these three, uh, it's easy to see that we could also think of sine as 1 over cosecant and cosine as 1 over secant or tangent as 1 over cotangent, right? For example, here if I multiply both sides by sine and then divide both sides by cosecant, I get a similar identity that sine is equal to 1 over cosecant, okay? And just recall that tangent of theta, we defined this as y over x, but that's the same thing as writing sine of theta over cosine of theta, isn't it? and cotangent is the same thing as cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. We call these our reciprocal identities. And we also have our Pythagorean identities. Recall these are sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1 we have that tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta and we have that 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Now we had derived these in terms of real numbers t by using the equation for the unit circle. So just to see how we get these to work for angles as well, looking at the proof of this first one, notice that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta. If I just plug in the definitions that we gave a few videos back for these trig functions of angles, remember that we defined sine squared to be y over r. So we get y over r squared we defined cosine squared to be x over r. This is x over r squared. So adding these together, we have common denominators. This gives me y squared plus x squared over r squared. But remember, just as in a little aside, remember that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Isn't it? So x squared plus y squared without a square root is the same thing as r squared. So I have r squared over r squared, which of course is just equal to 1. So we see this first identity here. And to get these other two identities, recall I can divide both sides of my first identity by sine squared, and I'm going to get sine squared over sine squared, which is 1, cosine squared over sine squared, which is cotangent squared, and on the right hand side, 1 over sine squared, which is cosecant. And if I take my original identity and divide both sides by cosine squared, I'm going to get tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So we can easily derive these two uh, simply by dividing this first one by either sine squared or cosine squared. Now how are we going to use these? What are some homework problems going to look like that involve these identities? Let's take a look at a couple examples now. Express tangent theta in terms of sine theta, where theta is in quadrant 2, or I'll often just write a capital Q with that Roman 2 next to it. That means quadrant 2. Now, here I can use my Pythagorean identities. Now, for my Pythagorean identities, note that cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. Right, I've taken my first Pythagorean identity and I subtracted sine squared from both sides. So from here, taking the square root, I get that cosine of theta 
is equal to either positive or negative square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Now we're in quadrant 2, whatever my theta is, it's in quadrant 2. So in quadrant 2, my sine is positive, but my cosine is negative. So this is going to give me that cosine of theta in quadrant 2 is equal to negative square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we know that tangent of theta for my reciprocal identities, this is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. And now it's a little more clear why we did all this work at the beginning. I can write cosine theta in terms of sine theta using what we found. This is just sine theta over negative square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And we're done. Remember when it says, when you see a question like this, express tangent of theta in terms of sine theta, what we're looking for is an equation where tangent theta is on the left all alone, and on the right I have a trig expression where the only trig function used is sine, or whatever trig function they put here, whatever they want you to write it in terms of. Okay, so this is our answer. Uh, final step, you could move this negative to the top or put it on the outside, um, but we see this is our answer. Okay, let's take a look at another example, how we might use this. Tangent of theta equals 2 thirds, and theta is in quadrant 3. Find cosine of theta. Okay, now recall that I have my Pythagorean identity, and we're going to call this method 1. We're going to do a second method as well. I have the Pythagorean identity tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. Okay, now cosine. of theta is equal to 1 over secant of theta, isn't it? So I can use this identity by noticing that if I take the square root of both sides, I get secant of theta is equal to, I'm going to leave a little gap, we need to figure out if it's positive or negative, the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. Now I'm in quadrant 3. Recall in quadrant 3, the only things that are positive are tangent and cotangent. So I have a negative secant, so I need this little minus sign here. So for my Pythagorean identity in quadrant 3, secant theta is negative square root of tangent squared plus 1. So continuing here, 1 over secant theta, that's going to be 1 over the negative square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. Now I can plug in because I know what tangent is, so this is 1 over negative square root. Tangent is 2 thirds, so this is 2 thirds squared plus 1. Continuing on, I'll just put that negative on the outside now. 1 over the square root, 2 thirds squared is 4 ninths. We have plus 1. So this is negative 1 over the square root. Now 1 is just 9 over 9, so I have a total of 13 ninths here in this root. Now, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and take the square root. Remember from our properties of square roots in pre-calc 1, the square root of a ratio is the same as the ratio of the square roots. So in other words, this is the same as negative 1 over the square root of 13 over the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is just 3. So I have 1 over a fraction. So I'm just going to take the reciprocal of what's in the bottom. In other words, this is negative 3 over the square root of 13. Okay. If you don't see that hidden step I did here, remember when we're dividing by a fraction, I take my numerator, which here is negative 1 over 1, and I multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 3 over root 13. Right, And we get to our solution here. Now I called this method 1. We can always use the Pythagorean identity to solve this problem. But a couple sections ago, we worked with right triangles. 
and we learned uh, we can do a lot of things with right triangles so let's take a look at how we would solve this problem using the properties of right triangles instead of the Pythagorean identities and clean up a little bit let's say now I want to use a right triangle instead so let's go ahead and draw out a right triangle let's call this my theta, the theta given in the problem. I'm going to do a right angle here. Now if tangent theta equals two-thirds, the way that looks on my triangle is that I have a two in my opposite and a three in my adjacent with respect to theta. Now this hypotenuse is going to be the, <clears throat> the square root of three squared plus two squared, which is the square root of nine plus four or the square root of 13, right, from my Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So now I have a right triangle I can use, cosine theta. And we need to be careful here because we still have quadrant information. Remember, this right triangle just gives us the relationships, but it doesn't incorporate the quadrant. I'm in quadrant 3, so I know that cosine is negative and from my triangle I have that cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse or 3 over the square root of 13. So exactly the same answer that we got before, we just got to it a little bit differently. Either method works for these types of problems, so practice doing both methods and whichever one you feel the most comfortable with, go ahead and stick with that one and build up your strength there because they're both going to work out just fine. Alright, now in the next video we're going to uh, look at a new formula for the area of a triangle using trig functions. That's going to be very helpful for some arbitrary triangles. And that will finish up our section 6.3. So we'll see you there.